Hello, everybody. Hello. Okay. Let me just prep this. All right. How's everyone doing? Okay. So, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Magandang hapon. Malapit na mag dinner time. So, this is the perfect way to spend pre dinner time. Um, before anything, I want to acknowledge GDGPH, GDG Zamboanga, Baguio, Cebu, Cagayan de Oro. Wow, it's been a wonderful two days. I was able to watch some of the talks and really is so organized. And it's a pleasure and an honor to be able to wrap a beautiful ribbon uh, around this two day event. All right. So, and of course, I want to acknowledge you sitting in front of the computer right now on a Sunday. Thank you for investing in yourself, uh, for spending time to see how you can improve on yourself and your tech career. Because when you improve, and this is also the reason I'm here today, I believe that you can serve your community better. I believe in the power of compounding effect. And when you get to up your tech career, you get to improve the lives of not only yourself, your family, but also our country, the Philippines. All right, so let me get started with the slides. All right. Uh, okay. So how to up your tech career? A little bit about me. So thank you for the beautiful introduction. I'm currently a clinical neuroscience researcher here at Taipei Medical. Uh, We're looking into the different brain mechanisms that's working inside of us to be able to help uh, alleviate mental suffering for future generations. Uh, as mentioned, I graduated with an MA in psychology, so, uh, also a woman tech maker ambassador. And basically everything that I do is centered around us human beings, how can we optimize ourselves to reach our fullest potential? And at the same time, how do we decrease uh, the things that are holding us down? Right. So today's talk will only be 25 to 30 minutes because I want to allocate the next and remaining time that we have together. No, para sa mga tanong niyo. Kasi I'm aware and I've been hearing a lot of feedback about a lot of issues internally and even at home now. So it's my pleasure to be here today to answer your questions related to mental health, um, loneliness, anxiety, sadness, imposter syndrome, lack of motivation, self-esteem. These are the things that we will be talking about today in this hour. Stick with me because I promise you there will be something, even just one thing that you can get out of this presentation that will lower down your stress levels after uh, this event, and you can move forward your forward with your week uh, in a productive mindset. And also, everything that I share later is for you guys. So feel free to screenshot. All right, it's yours to take um, as something that you can look back to even after Dev Fest. Okay. The reason why um, I want to talk about how to tell up your tech career from a lens of psychology is this statement. You hold the hands that bring you down. What does that mean? Our hands, your hand, our hands, it's the hands that code, create beautiful websites, create beautiful applications, create you know wonderful innovations around the world. It's precisely this, your body right now. But this exact body is also the body that procrastinates. It's also the body that sometimes lacks motivation. It's also the body that gets angry at your parents when you're stuck at home with them for the past eight months. So as you may have noticed, this body is what gives light, but it's also what can bring us down. And so my objective for us here today is to help you navigate your shadows better so you can up your tech career. Because the key to upgrading your tech career, to elevating yourself to a point where you reach your dreams is by upgrading your brain. It's by upgrading your brain because you are 
more valuable than any tool that you have. You are the hardware and the software of your career. So what happens, di ba, pag sa computer, pag may virus, or like, yung hardware natin, no, sirang sira, wala tayong magagawa. The same with our bodies. And the beautiful thing is science, my field in mental health, we're discovering a lot of great things that I'll be sharing with you today that will be able to help you fix some of the bugs that you have and optimize yourself. All right. So we are going to go through three levels. Yung unang level ay strengthening your mind. How do you strengthen your mind during this time? Um, number two, how can you sharpen your tech craft? So we're going to talk more about competence here. Tapos yung last, how do we add compassion? So this is science-backed. Uh, compassion can actually help you boost your career. So back at mind, body, and, and spirit. Because a lot of times, the schools, diba, tinuturo lang sa atin yung level one, which is the technical aspects. But the beautiful thing about DevFest, which I love, is it's very holistic. So we will be talking about things like your heart and your tech craft and work ethics because it's by aligning all parts of you, that is when you can really succeed. It's the one who has the patience and the hard work to go far in their careers, who can sustain. Innovation is useless if the tool is not working. So let's move forward. Some of the tools that we'll need today, pen and paper, and feel free to screenshot any slides. All right? Okay. So let's start with one. Let's start with our minds. To move forward no, in our careers, we will be met with a lot of frustrations. A lot. But, you know, there are some days when I wish na yung ka-work ko computer lang. <laughs> Kasi nakaka-assert talaga minsan mga tao, di ba? Yeah, I know. It's hard to admit that. And that is the reason why we get to strengthen our hearts. Uh, and our minds, I mean. Because if we do not strengthen our minds, madali tayong madistract. Madalit tayong magalit. And that distracts us from our most important work, which is to create impactful technology. Right? So I want to zoom in inside our brains. Right? Inside our brains, I'm going to get a bit nerdy here, is a mechanism called the mirror neurons. So my mirror talaga kung dala, kung are in person to. So inside our brains, we have mirror neurons. What does the mirror neuron do? It copies the environment. And so have you noticed na during this pandemic, pag yung nanay mo or tatay mo anxious sa bahay, kahit kalma ka usually, parang nababaliw ka na rin. Diba? And that's really not your fault. It's inside our brains. The mirror neuron copies. And this is why anxiety, fear is contagious. It's contagious. Now, what happens when we feel fear and anxiety? I'm not saying we rub that off. No, it's part of being human. We get to feel it. But when we need to put food on the table, when we need to hustle, when we need to work, we need to learn how to manage this fear. And so today, here I bring to you five tips that you can use right now, today, to bring your cognitive mind back. Guys, it's really easy to feel lack of motivation these days, but know that every day is day one. You can always start again. Baby steps, baby steps. And here are the five tips that you can use to jump started. Number one, learn the rules of the game you're playing. Learn the rules. If you are in UX, you're in crypto, fintech, e-commerce, what does the future look like? based on the data set that you have, right? What does the future look like? Instead of panicking, well, after you panic, because I believe it's it, there's power in releasing, after you panic and be anxious, let's sit down together. Who do I need to be? Who do we need to be to get to where we wanna be? And to get that, we have to first understand. So uh, my way of doing this is to do a lot of research, talk to people who are on top of my career, and see what they think. Number two, choose your alleys. What does that mean? Now we have mirror neurons. We copy people. Leverage natin to. Imagine if the five people closest to you 
are all powerhouses. Imagine if all of them are calm, they can talk you talk to you in an honest way. Your career will jumpstart. This is the secret of places like Silicon Valley. It's not about California. It's not. It's about the people. And so if you can surround yourself with people that you can ally with who share the same vision, values, that will allow you to stay calm during this time. Number three, know your triggers. Uh, Self-awareness is the greatest power that you can have if you want to go far in your career. Because not knowing what triggers you, what makes you angry, your enemies can leverage that. So all of us here today, I want us to be aware. Ano yung mga things na napipiko na ko agad? Or ano yung mga things na madali akong bulahin? Right? The more self-aware we are about ourselves, the more people cannot fool us. And that's how you win the game. When you go forward in your career, you'll meet a lot of people who will trigger your buttons. But if you know your buttons, they cannot trigger you. Number four, prepare to be disappointed. It's easy to expect things from people, but as you may have known, siguro it's a school project, you know, minsan, you know, may mga school project ako dati, ako lang yung gumagawa, yung buong group, di ko alam kung nasan na. So in the, in the, if you can relate, yeah, let's laugh together. So in the past, ma offend ako. Is it about me? You know, pinapersonalan ko siya. But as I study more uh, in the field of psychology, I realized that you really can't change people. Sana madali. Sana talaga. Pero hindi. People will only change when they want to change. And so what we can do as professionals is to adjust our expectations and be prepared to be disappointed and be okay. And number five, befriend uncertainty. Befriend uncertainty. Uh, the future is unknown. This year is a surprise. Uh, and so there is a lot of uncertainty, especially in our careers, di ba? Ako yung dati talaga, guys. If you can relate, may mga PowerPoint slides ako na visioning my next 20 years. Guys, wala nang use yung PowerPoints na yun. None of them, like, really, not every step is, like, nasunod. So, because I I really wanted to, because I, I want to be in control of my career. But here's the thing. Uncertainty is the only certainty. And so I learned through experience that the best way that I can arm myself and stay calm is is to be ready mentally, physically, and spiritually for the things that will come. So feel free to screenshot this um, and try practicing this at home. And here's one question I want to leave you with uh, from the uh, mental perspective, which is based on the data that you have right now. What do you think will happen in your space in the next five years? Okay, feel free to screenshot this uh, and take it home after this talk. Next, okay, my favorite part work ethics how do we up our work uh, our tech career it's by upgrading our work ethics so i want to share my story on how i got into psychology so uh so i graduated from very good school ateneo for my undergrad and i took up management economics now uh it's it's a business degree, but it's not my biggest passion. My biggest passion since I was nine years old, maybe some of you can relate, you passion you for, let's say, design or creating things. Psychology was my thing, and I really wanted to pursue it, but my family dissuaded me. And so I entered a business degree. I didn't really like it, but I had to go through it. And yung mga scores ko, it's like accounting. I got a C plus. It was really, really bad. And so how I shifted from a business degree to psychology was one pivotal moment. And that was the death of my mother. Yeah. Um, death woke me up. It showed me that life is finite and that we only have one life to use our skill sets 
all of you here today sitting in front of the computer, I believe you have a God-given gift that you're meant to give to people. And if you keep ignoring that sound, it's only gonna lead to regret. And so during the death of my mom, I woke up. I said to myself, I need to do something about my life that can impact people and, and impact lives in the way that only I can do. And so with one backpack and two luggages, I flew alone to California to pursue psychology. So for anyone here who has shifted careers, yung hindi kayo komsay dati or hindi kayo design, you entered from a, a totally irrelevant field, you would get this. So I entered the classroom, okay? Sobrang intimidating. Siyempre, galing ako sa Asia. This was the U.S. And I, nakao pa ako doon. Like intro, isa-isa ang mga tao. Oh, I got the bachelor's in psychology. I got the bachelor's in neuroscience. And meanwhile, economics. So I felt very, very insecure. And I was like, Oh my goodness, is there a way to back out? Maybe this is not my calling. But then after that first lesson and the professor was talking, he was talking about mental health. He was talking about how there's a lot of things that can help people with loneliness and it's in this space. I was like, Christine, throw imposter syndrome away, we're gonna work. And for three years, I studied nonstop, day and night, I networked with professors, went to conferences, read things that I never knew before I entered psychology. And I graduated just a few months ago with a 4.0, which is a perfect GPA. This wouldn't be possible without hard work. And this is what I wanna share with you guys. You can't deal with the hands you're dealt with. Uh, you're, we are all given cards that sometimes we don't, didn't choose our families, you know, where we were born and everything. But what we can do is to accept and take that energy of resentment and turn it into hard work. Hard work, hard work, hard work pays off. And if you want to go far in your career, whether it is to be the next top tech entrepreneur in the Philippines, in Silicon Valley, to be a top designer. You can do it. I believe in you. You just get to work. You just get to work. Adam Grant, organizational psychologist, he says, highly successful people have three things in common, motivation, ability, and opportunity. Ability, you can do anything you set your mind to, anything. The price is hard work and you can do it. Effort cannot happen without the right mindset. And so now I'm going to be giving you a practical tool that has changed my life on how you can work harder and start believing in yourself. And this is by um, Stanford psychologist, Carol Dweck, her research on growth mindset. So you can screenshot this, Fixed versus growth mindset. Fixed mindset is attaching yourself to the result. Growth mindset is attaching yourself to learning. This changed my life. Because in the past, I went to a Chinese school. So, syempre, yung metric of success namin, 100 over 100. So, if you get a 98, you're a failure. Something, <laughs> something like that. And that was really toxic for me because I would easily get discouraged. But when I switched to growth mindset, where I attach my self-worth, not to the results, but to the, ah, may natutunan ako today. May natutunan ako. That's enough. And research found by Carol Dweck, he, she says, the top is where fixed mindset people hunger to be but where many growth-minded people arrive as a byproduct of their enthusiasm for what they do. She also found that in growth mindset, you don't need confidence. You don't need. What you need is a mindset shift of, I am here to learn. That's it. I am here to learn. She found from research that people who had this growth mindset are tackling problems, charting new courses, and working on important issues 
She says, and I quote, maybe they haven't found a cure for cancer, but the search was deeply meaningful. Here, I remember all of our tech hero, most of us, Mr. Elon Musk. Imagine, guys, kung nag-give up na siya nung hindi siya pinansin ng mga investors, nung pinagtawanan siya ng mga tao. Imagine if he gave up, if he had the fixed mindset. We won't have Tesla. We won't have SpaceX. We won't have all of these amazing innovations. But because, and he's one of those people with a growth mindset, he believed in learning. He believed in hard work. He believed in persevering on the goal. Look where he is now. And the beautiful thing is Elon Musk's brain is just like yours and like mine. If he can do it, we can do it. All it takes is this statement. I am a learner. Hindi ako proficient Python coder now. Hindi ako web dev na sobrang galing pa. But I can learn. Hindi ako tech entrepreneur pa na nasa Forbes. Hindi ako um, like IPO. But I can learn and I'll get there. I am a learner. The four words that strung together can be the most powerful life-changing thing in your life. And I hope that you can take this home today. I am a learner. And lastly, I will end with compassion. It's expensive to work from a place of fatigue. Last na to, and then Q&A. Okay. Have you ever had the project before na sobrang antok ka na, like two hours ka lang nag natulog, tapos nag-work ka, tapos you slept, and then you wake up, and then you looked at that work, and you're like, oh my God, kailangan kong ulitin lahat. <laughs> yeah? yeah, I can relate because I'm al I also experienced that before. And that's one thing I learned from my experience. It's expensive to work from a place of fatigue. And so the key to a long, sustainable career for you and me is to have self-compassion. It's being thrown a lot around a lot, self-care, self-compassion, but I wanna dive deeper today and talk about what it really is. Uh, but before that, uh, Christine Neff, one of the top researchers on self-compassion, so she did a lot of studies on people who had self-compassion and those who were critical on themselves, and she says, self-compassionate people showed fewer anxiety symptoms and were more emotionally regulated. What that means is they're more resilient. So there is value in self-compassion. Now I'm going to dive in. What is self-compassion? Self-compassion is both yin and yang loving yourself, yin and yang way. So in common words, we're throwing around a lot, it's yin compassion. Parang, oh, be affectionate ka, and ka, mag yoga ka, mag plant ka, like, gawa ka ng halaman farm. Like, that is yin compassion, right? It's beautiful. It's about nurturing yourself, that motherly energy. But what people are missing out on, and today you learn, is yang compassion. Yang compassion is that fatherly compassion. Think of, think of your uncle or your dad who's protective of you and who wants, like, siya yung una mag sa ex mo. Yon, that's yang compassion. Yang compassion is something that we instill in ourselves where when we are underperforming, when we know we could work and we're just watching Netflix, that's the power, that compassion that says, girl, you can do much better. That's also compassion. Compassion is not sleeping all day. Compassion is doing what's best for you. Again, compassion is doing what's best for you. So the same in your career, if you feel like you're being bullied at work or my mga toxic workers ka, I hope that today, we, we get to learn how to fight for ourselves and say, no, today's the last day you're going to bully me. I'm going to fight for myself. That is compassion. It's saying, I'm not going to let you step on me. I'm not going to let you disrespect me. That is compassion. And so combining both motherly and fatherly love that you create in yourself day by day, hindi to one day na pagising mo compassion that no, this is an everyday work. You get to slowly build the resilience that you need to go far in your tech career. And this is my last slide before the Q&A. Um, oh, I have one more slide, but the second to the last slide is compassion for others. The same compassion we have and we give to ourselves and the people we love, I hope that you also give for other people. 
we live in trying times. I know I don't have to keep saying it. You already know. I already know. And so people are operating from a place that may not be themselves. People are stressed. They're losing jobs. Uh, so many things going on. It can be you and me sitting here today who are facing those problems. And so compassion for others, being able to say, maybe that person needs a helping hand. Maybe I should reach out and bring some food for my friend or my boss. Compassion for others. That's how we grow stronger. It's not just ourselves, but in our careers, we need to take care of people because I believe it's the tribe that goes up together. We can't do this alone, guys. So let's take care of each other. Alagaan ng isat isa. And this is the last slide. Last talaga, you can screenshot this. Um, some actionable compassion activities that you can do for yourself and for your family. Breathe. Take a few deep breaths a day. Sleep. Gratitude. And lastly, uh, whatever brings you joy. Maybe it's watching a good film on Netflix. Maybe it's drawing. This is up to you. So think about what brings you joy and makes you calm, right? So combining all of this, a strong mind, strong hands, work ethics, and a strong heart, you can up your tech career because it's up to you. And if you can leverage all of this, you have a great future ahead, all right? So now it's Q&A time. Uh, feel free to screenshot this. We can, um, you can tweet me. This is my Twitter and my Instagram. Uh, if you have any questions that you're shy to ask, just reach out. All right, thank you. Hello, Christine. Awesome. Hi. Hi. It's so nice to see you. I think the last time I saw you was a DevFest event also last yeah, 2017, yeah. right? Like two, two years ago. Oh, oh. It's so pleasure. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for your talk. Actually, I was taking down notes. I'm glad. Really inspiring. I really learned a lot from the talk today. Oh, thank you, actually. Mm -hmm. This is something mm -hmm. I needed during this time. So, the mm -hmm. ano, really compassionate. Compassion is really the thing we need right now because of what's happening in the world, like all the negativities and stuff. So, Definitely. yeah. Thank you for the talk so much. I really appreciate it. So, we have questions mm -hmm. for you. Uh, and the first one is How do I unwind and do recreational activities without feeling guilty that I'm not currently being productive? Okay. First of all, I want to acknowledge your question because as an overachiever, yeah, it's you can be guilty. But ang sana nagwo work na lang ako. Like bakit ako magwo-water ng orchid ko pag pwede <laughs> ako magtrabaho. It's first of all, it's normal. And number 2, I want to tell you that all animals in the world rest except humans. We forget that we are animals. And so I want to let you know that resting is part of being human. Productivity is being able to integrate rest. Because if you don't rest, we are going to break down in the future, right? And it's not good for us and for our families. So a way to reframe this is I'm resting so I can be more productive. Not I'm resting and being unproductive. It's I'm resting so I can be productive so i hope that was helpful yeah yeah i was taking notes <laughs> with your <laughs> I, i'm going to quote you so resting is part of being human so that's true sometimes we forget to rest and make ourselves exhausted and we cannot be productive anymore <laughs> even if we like it exactly. yeah so thank you miss christine i hope of she course. answers your question do you have another one so here it goes. Is it possible to advance my career without interacting too much with other people? Oh my God, the million dollar question. <laughs> I, you know, there are days when I just want to read my book and not talk to humans too. So I can relate with you. It's really tiring. Uh, it's really tiring. So my answer to this is yes and no. Yes, you don't have to interact with uh, with people if you work on things like systems, like backend and everything. You can minimize, but also no, because yeah, because we still need to depend on each other. 
what we can do is to ask ourselves the question, what annoys us about people and how can we minimize that? Maybe you like interacting with smart people or with people from Silicon Valley, you know, people who care about tech. Maybe it's not people, it's just certain people, right? So being able to ask yourself, like what is annoying about people? Then we can filter it out. <laughs> oh, that was helpful. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you, Ms. Christine. We have more questions. Go for Here it. Go. So my parents have been very toxic. How do I keep myself sane during this pandemic? I can't choose the people I'm with. How do I how do I choose allies now? Okay. <laughs> okay. The internet. That's how you choose your allies. If you can spend 10% of your time with your parents because of course we need to respect them and we are a family. Uh, and and But 90% to find people that we want to talk to and who can elevate us. So the internet is your tool. Communities like GDG, very strong. My, my Facebook group, Pataya, right? Yes. Uh, communities on Reddit, on Twitch, Marame, GitHub, like, Connecting with people who care about what you do, uh, that will be very helpful. Personally, Twitter. I love Twitter. A lot of very, very driven people uh, who also don't like, you know, like very boring things. They're all there. So, yeah, I, I believe you can create alleys online. Yes, naman. Tama, di ba? Kasi we're like in a virtual settings most of the time right now. So... Oh. We can do physical um, interaction, so things, yeah. Exactly. Okay, the next one is, how do you deal with someone, especially relatives, who discourage you from your dreams? Oh, this is tough. <laughs> ano ba tong questions, guys? Parang lahat na feel ko rin. Ako, so... Relatable kasi eh. Relatable kasi. So, my answer to this is boundaries boundaries to be able to succeed you have to love what you do i do believe in that based on studies of a lot of successful business leaders and scientists they love what they do and so if you can communicate to your relatives that you achieving your dream is best for the family because you can provide better being able to frame it that way maybe they will accept it but if they don't you have to question yourself um what are your values right uh, do you really want to uh, please your relatives more because you care about harmony more? Or do you want to help people uh, through your career? So it's really up to you. But if you really want to cut that thread, I would say strong boundaries and having a strong support system at the end. Because maraming nagkakamali dito is they cut the cord with their family tapos walang, walang nagsasalo sa likod. Walang, wala. So that creates loneliness. So that, but if you really want to cut the cord, I'm not encouraging anything here, but if you really want to cut the cord, make sure you have a support system waiting for you at the end. Maybe it can be friends, mentors, friends, but just have at least one person who you can talk to after you cross that bridge, right? If you really need to. Um, but yeah, that's it. Nice. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, support system is very important, no? It's everything, yeah. Okay, another one. So, come keep your questions coming, guys. I think oh, yeah. it's very interesting, kasi talaga. And then yes, and we notes. have so much time. Yeah, yeah, we have time. Okay, is there any way to find out if my behavior is negatively affecting my peers when no one has called me out? My first question we're asking uh, is to ask you, um, what is making you care so much about what your peers are thinking? That's it. <laughs> What's making you care? Um, um, yeah, that's it. What is making you care? And if the answer to that question is something that you really care about, then the way is to communicate with them. Uh, straight out, like, hey, I did something. Um, I'm afraid that I may have offended you. What do you think? But before we get into that, in some ways, people-pleasing mode, I hope we get to ask ourselves first, like, why, why are we caring? 
right? And from there, we get to enter. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. Well, okay, another one. <laughs> from oh, yeah. your observation with our local culture and from the U.S., how pre prevalent is the fixed mindset? And what do you think is the most common cause of propagation of this way of thinking? Okay. Ah, oh, oh my, I can talk all day. But fixed mindset, okay, just let me rehash this for people who just came in. Fixed mindset is basically attaching your self-esteem to the goal. And so when you don't reach your KPI and your objective, you just become very not confident and you just hide in your Netflix cave. Okay, that's fixed mindset. Uh, and so based on my observation, it is very prevalent. Prevalent means very common. It is very common. Why? Because of, unfortunately, our existing education system in a lot of ways, na pag, it's created that way, the system. Diba? Pag bagsak ka, nakakahiya. Color red yung mark. Hindi pa nga blue or black ball pen. Red. Wala ka pa lang. Nakakahiya talaga bumagsak. So, syempre, there's shame, right? So, that is so common across the world. And so, what do you think is the most common cause? Uh, it's, it's cultural. It's cultural. And so the good thing about this is Carol Dweck, the scientist that I talked about, she has a whole program on instilling growth mindset in schools. Nangyari na siya ngayon sa US, and I hope we get to bring it to Asia, uh, which is basically teaching kids that it's okay to fail. What's important is you keep learning. So I'm optimistic that moving forward, we're going towards the growth direction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Next, again, okay. How was your experience on moving from a high same ethnic demographic population, Asia, to a high diversity population, the U.S., uh, that, contribu that contributed to your growth? Okay. Wow. So I am kind of assuming the person asking this wants to move. I am hinting it. Uh, I will tell you that it changed my life. Yeah. To be surrounded by, because I lived in L.A., there were over 150 nationalities all living in one land. So it opened my eyes and made me become more compassionate as a person. Now, before, kasi, at least in my culture, kung in grandparents ko, they see someone na, kung ar, yung buhok pink, kasi niya, ay, weird, yeah, wag mo pansinin, ganon. That was because they grew up in a very, you know, homogenous society, which is awesome as well. Um, but when I went to the U.S. and I saw there was one time I was in a cafe, there was pumasok na mukhang Star Wars. February to, di pa Halloween na. Like, just really weird, eccentric people. And so living in a place like that where there's so much diversity made me more compassionate as a person. I learned that everyone comes from different backgrounds. And so before judging them, I first understand where they come from. So it definitely changed me. It softened me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah but I'm learning from your experience personally. <laughs> yeah. Very, glad. very on point answers, right? So I'm glad. Okay. I think we could move on to the next question. Yeah. Okay. What are some concrete steps in order to attain self compassion? Very great question. Very great question. The first step is self awareness. Notice when you fail at something, even something micro. Let's say, um, na iwan mo susit mo, or, or, naga internally galit ka sa parents mo, kasi ang ingay nila at 5 a.m. and then you start feeling guilty. Na hindi dapat ako magagalit. That guilt, that's not self compassion. And so, being able to First of all, be aware of when you are not self-compassionate, when you are critical of yourself. In those moments, we shift it. You say, oh, I'm not being self-compassionate. So being more, ah, it's normal that I'm feeling annoyed. It's okay. It's okay. It's really normal. I mean, it's 5 a.m. It's okay. You don't have to be guilty. Something like that. So being aware of when you are not self-compassionate and then shifting it. Number two, this is what I practice whenever I feel, because I am a lone bird, I fly around alone. And so there are days when I'm really lonely, even now alone here in Taipei. Uh, and so what I do before I sleep is I say, I love you to myself. Very weird, but it works. I just say, you know, Christine, what a day. It's been tough. 
I love you. We did our best. So same for you. It's very cheesy, but it works. Just saying I love you to yourself. Now, you know, you're working during this pandemic. You're attending to this talk. You know, this is great. So being able to say that and say, yeah, we did well today. So using we to, to say talk to yourself, it helps a lot. So there we go. No, we yeah. did. That's noted. <laughs> oh, that's noted. Love, <laughs> love yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have more, I guess. Go lang. Okay. How can you cope with negative feelings in the workplace? Ex example, office politics. Uh, like you're doing the best you can, but it's not getting recognized. Okay. So... This is two separate questions, I think. The first is how can you cope with negative feelings in the workplace? This is very common among us, um, especially when there's a lot of micro and passive aggressions. So how you can cope is self-compassion and, and release the anger. Release the anger, guys. Release. Sumigaw ka sa pillow. Sumigaw ka. Like, be angry. Like, listen to Linkin Park. Like, be release it you don't have to be like calm it's okay to be angry because as i said earlier as i said earlier people don't change unless they want to change so as much as possible you'll have to deal with this annoying person for a while to keep our jobs right and so release the anger somewhere else um that's very important number two like you're doing your best but it's not getting recognized I am remarkable. This is the workshop that we host here at GDG. So, so speak up. Uh, if you can search this in your free time, I am remarkable. Um, it's a workshop. Basically, it's practice. Practice saying your accomplishments without feeling hiya. Practice. If you did it, you did it. So it comes off something like this. Boss, today I accomplished two apps. I, the social is wrong metric. I know no one can do that in one day, maybe some, but anyway, just you get it. Just two metrics. Say it straight out. Your voice, be firm, guys. Hindi yung pwede, ay, ito yung nag No, no. Confidence. Ito yung ginawa na ko today. This is the report. Speak from a place of I did it. Speak of a place of I'm professional. And so slowly, your peers will start to respect you if you carry yourself with dignity and with self-respect. So that's my answer. Yeah. Okay. Noted. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I actually you know, that's the good thing about the I'm I am remarkable um session that we had earlier, right? It's yeah. actually promoting self-confidence to each yeah. people. So yeah. yes, guys, let's all be confident and love ourselves, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay more let's have more yeah. okay how can one initiate or adapt a growth mindset in a team this is a great question thank you to whoever is saying this you, you are a great leader thank you we need more like you how by praising the process not only the results what do i mean it's not you don't praise you can pray, you praise people, let's say, go watch a website, ang ganda ng website. So, wow, ang ganda ng website. That's results praising. Process praising is, wow, I see how hard you worked and how you really searched Google and Reddit and all these sources just to create this website for us. Thank you. That's process praising. And the thing with rewards is people do the things that they re get rewarded to. So feedback loop, yeah. So when they feel appreciated for their hard work, they will keep doing it. So growth mindset starts with the words we say to our team. Like, good job, guys, for stepping up today's uh, Slack, for chatting. Thank you. Just being more process-oriented rather than only praising people when they finished a KPI. So that's how we start. Oh, nice. Nice awesome. one. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can we flash the next question? Yes. Let's go. I'm a yes type person, but recently my plate is full that I can't help anyone. Problem is it problem is it's hard for me to say no and now I'm getting burnt out from everything. Any advice? Oh my god, my dear empath. You are an empath. My dear. 
Oh, and the back. <laughs> oh, you know, you are one of the most loving persons for even asking this. And it's amazing. I know you are a person who loves a lot. I can feel it without seeing you. And so my answer to this is love yourself as much as you love others. Yeah. I mean, saying no is hard, but for once, do something for yourself. I urge you. I hope you do it. Um, it's really hard, but it takes practice, right? At first, parang, ay, baka di na, ta, di na ako gustuhin pag nag -no ako. But that is prioritizing other people. Right? So when you start prioritizing yourself, you say, I say no, and it's okay. It's okay. And you slowly get better at it. So the answer to this is boundary setting. There's a good book on this. Uh, it's called Boundaries. Um, and you can learn on how to say no. Mahirap to, especially sa Pinas. Parang ang hirap talaga mag-no eh. Parang yes, tapos mag-ghost na lang. Parang hindi darating. So that's, let's say no more. Let's say no more. And dear, yeah, you, you deserve to love yourself. That's my answer. Yeah, I could also yeah. add that because it because of culture as well right it's hard yeah. to say no um given that here actually in the philippines it's not really that easy to say no no right and then sometimes it will be taken against you so oh. actually this is a process me myself it's hard to say no sometimes i always say yes and i really get the feeling of burned out so it's a process of learning to say no so, you're absolutely correct. You got this. Yep. Okay. I am Yan. Love yourself. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, next. Is it working to take a long break or hiatus from everything because you felt like you're losing yourself? Is it wrong? Sorry. Is it wrong to take a long break or hiatus from everything because you felt like you're losing yourself? Okay, I'm just gonna give a one question. I'm just gonna throw you one question, and that is, what does your gut say? If your gut says it's wrong, it's wrong. If it says it's not wrong, I need to take care of myself, it's time to take care of yourself. Um, yeah, that's it. Listen to your body. Remember, you are the hardware. When the hardware is wear worn off, we cannot do anything. Health is priority. And so if your body says, hindi na talaga natin kaya, we need a short break, um, then let's go for it. That's it. Self-awareness. Okay. Yes. Self -awareness. Okay. Last question. Great. Okay. We have last que question. Oh, okay. So that is the last question, I mean. <laughs> so that ends our Q&A. Thank you, Mr. Christine for sharing your insight. Actually, really helpful. Personally, it's really relatable, this topic. So um, I hope the, the people also watching um had their yeah or their their reaction to laughing because of the situations that you shared. Yeah. Okay. Um Miss Christine, you. are you okay to answer one more question? May pahabol daw eh. Go la. Go la. Okay. So the question is, how do you deal with imposter syndrome? The feeling of despite working really hard and having achieved a lot, or maybe not, mm -hmm. you still don't feel enough. Enough. How do you feel enough? <laughs> oh, I sigh like this because this is, I sometimes feel it too. I, I do feel it too. So I'm going to share from personal experience on how I go through it. I first tell myself that I am enough. It's an um, affirmation. So this is backed by psychology. The words we speak to ourselves is our life. And so if I say, I am enough, I am enough, I am enough, I start believing it. I am enough. So you can practice, write it down. I am enough, I am enough, I am enough. So when you're calmer, you say, what do I need to do to to get to where I want to go? What is the skill set that I need, right? So being practical and at the same time empathetic, this two has to go together. So, ano yung skill set na kulang ko? Let's say today you wanna, you got in, let's say, fa uh, not Facebook, let's say Google. 
right? You got in day one mo sa trabaho. Tapos you look around you, just go grab it for a genius. What am I doing here? Right? If you feel it, you're not alone. And so the way to, to calm yourself down, if that's the situation, you say, I'm enough. You know, people trust me. I'm here for a reason. I'm right where I need to be. Now, what do I need to work on? Ano yung pinaka weak spot ko? Let's say is it CSS? Baka ba kulang ako sa TensorFlow? Like, what do I need to work on? And then spend time working on it. Confidence comes from competence. I do believe in that. Slowly, when you build conf- competence, you start feeling more confident. Pero at first talaga, it's normal to feel imposter syndrome. And so to wrap everything up, number one, first affirm yourself. I am enough regardless of my job. I am enough as a human being. And number two, honest assessment. Ano yung kulang ko ngayon professionally? Hindi sa pagkatao, ah. ano yung kulang ko sa work, right? And then you work on it. Detaching yourself from work, that's the healthy way to do it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so awesome. much, Miss Christine. So, pasabog na question for the last question. Thank you for giving us your time this Sunday. So, that's that's the end of the Q&A session for this breakout session. And actually, thank you again, Miss Christine. So, I'll welcome the uh, my co-host now. So, thank you so much, Miss Christine. Thank you, dear. Thank you. You're amazing, too. Thanks for facilitating.